Hello! Oh, hang on. Let me set up my chat window so I can talk to everybody. Ooh. We got, oh my goodness, look at all these people. Luca, DBZ fan, Corvid, Ella, and Avatar. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my god, so many people. <sighs> I apologize for the late stream today. I, uh, I have a sick person in the house, so I've been playing nurse today. Um, I was also cooking a lot. Um, so. Your girl's been busy this Monday. But it was good. Because I had off from work. Because in the U.S. we have this thing called Veterans Day. So I had off Veterans Day and I did made cafe things and I did household things. I have a slice of banana bread next to me. Homemade, hell yeah. Uh, and a glass of water. Sippy sippy. So we can continue our journey with our vampire friends. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, their fever has jumped from like 99 point something to 103 so uh we're we're alternating with the ibuprofen and the uh tylenol so uh hopefully they'll be better and you know doctor's appointment tomorrow very important baked goods are wonderful i i used a whole wheat banana bread recipe because i had some whole wheat flour that i needed to use up uh, from King Arthur Flour, honestly, I love any and all King Arthur Flour recipes. They have never let me down. But yeah, y'all should stay healthy, please. <laughs> Woo. Get your flu shot. What else do you need? Flu shot, drink lots of water, stay warm, dress warmly, all that nonsense. Hi, Alyssa. We are here. We are ready to do things. Another chapter with Vampire Jesus. Okay. Yeah, holy cheese. Yeah, no, I, uh, I have a glass of water at their bedside. And I might make, like, a pitcher of, like, iced herbal tea. What happened? What's up, Corvid? What'd you notice? Maybe I should hit the load screen, huh? The dating billboard. Vaguely? No, you didn't. girl on the billboard is eyeless. God damn it! More eyeless visual novel stuff. Oh, look at you. Corvid is finding Easter eggs. Alright. So let's continue on. Oh, did I... Did I not save after the last thing? Because I already answered this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. If I played my cards right, then maybe during my next meeting with Randall, I could catch another glimpse of whatever was lurking behind his flippant smile. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Already? Jesus. The tea is hot. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't 
don't know why it's lagging. A bitch set up an ethernet connection. Hang on. Oh, is it better now? I'm still gonna look. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Maybe. All right. Is that any better? Shit. Okay. Hmm. We're back. We're back. Okay. That's good. Let's see. Just reload this. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> After a difficult struggle, I managed to raise my heavy eyelids. The first thing I felt was hunger stirring in my gut, gnawing me awake. Sleep is important, Ella! What time is it where you are? And if you have to go to work or school early tomorrow, go to bed! <laughs> you can always watch the playback. Eventually, I rolled out of bed, fighting a sluggish feeling me every morning. Tonight I had to take care of that job for Charisse, but I needed to feed first. What was that job? She gave us another job and I forgot what it was. Drink from a human, drink from a blood bag. I want to be more like a vampire, so I'm going to drink from a human. Because I feel like Randall would appreciate that more. Human! I quickly pulled on my clothes, hurrying outside. Once I left the hotel, I immediately caught the scent of a lone human in the side street nearby. How can you smell? Well, I guess you can smell multiple scents if they're with somebody. I answered my own question. Never mind. <laughs> School is important! I mean, I don't know what the education system is like in your country. I don't know exactly where you are, but, um... The last name in your username suggests somewhere in Europe, maybe? Hmm? A perfect target. Oh! Oh, okay, I thought that flashed in our head. Uh, too absorbed in his thoughts, the man didn't even notice me until I'd bitten him from behind. I drank just enough to sate myself, leaving him standing in a pleasant daze. Good, we didn't knock him out this time. Hooray! By the time I returned to the street, Charisse's car was there, patiently waiting for me. I climbed into the back seat, but as usual, the silent driver didn't acknowledge me. Who is this mysterious masked man? I don't know if he's masked, but who is the mysterious driver? I don't know. All right. Oh, Luca likes this mission. Here we go. Uh, as soon as I closed the door, he took off towards Santa Monica, weaving through the hectic traffic. I really don't know a whole lot about like LA or SoCal geography. So uh, 
Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. my mission seemed pretty straightforward, unlike the other night's sewer crawl. This is also educational. Why? Why? <laughs> or like, what are we learning here, kids? <laughs> What's the lesson? Once I found the humans, I'd just have to scare or coax them away. Ah, right. Okay, so they're they're trying newspapers, trying to find vampires, and you have to get rid of them. Got it. No, I know. I know it only affects the humanity and vampiric stats, but I wanted to be more vampiric. Because that is what we are, right? By any means necessary, Charisse had said. After we pulled up by the pier, I hopped out of the car and made my way down the beach, scanning the dunes for any mortals with cameras. Sure enough, I didn't have to search for very long. Marching down the shoreline was a group of young men hauling TV equipment, eagerly shouting and pointing at various innocent beachgoers. Charisse was right. The beach house was close by. Could it be Tuxedo Mask? If Tuxedo Mask was a vampire, yes. If they kept going, they might run into Randall's crew, which could end either in unwanted publicity or the mortals' deaths. After I observed the men for a short while, I decided the best way to deal with them would be to... Oh my god, it's you! Uh-oh. Suddenly, a thrilled voice cried out from behind me. Who is it? I turned to see a young man rushing forward through the sand. He's cute! Who's that? An uncomfortably familiar young man. Was this Le Boyfriend from, uh, your human days? I can't believe it. I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> We're learning about Jesus! <laughs> but here you are. Here I am. Just like it's destiny or something. Wow. Our Lord and Savior, Randall. It was- Oh, no. It was the same mortal I'd fed on my second night. The dude outside the restaurant by the dumpster who we left in the dentist chair, right? I think that's it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that's me. Welcome to Bible study. We have blood bags. <laughs> oh god. I mean, you know, the whole blood of Christ, body of Christ, like, you know, not too far off. Uh, you remember me? Sorry, you're mistaking me for someone else. Oh no. Shit. Um. Oh, how do I get out of this? Uh, sorry, you're mistaking me for someone else. Ha <laughs> ha! There's no way I could mistake you for anyone else. <laughs> the book of Genesis, Marcus chapter 6, verse 9. Oh, God. There's this... This power around you. Oh, he's blushing. Some kind of wild, awesome energy. Man, it sounds really lame when I try and put it into words, huh? <laughs> this didn't make any sense! Hadn't Cherie said that humans forgot everything leading up to the bite? But this human scent wasn't like any other I'd smelled. What is he? It was oddly sweet, different from the salty sea air or the stench of unwashed mortals nearby. <laughs> Take a shower. Was he special somehow? Oh god, this is unexpected. Oh, I should probably introduce myself, huh? My name's David. I work with this photo crew, part of a tabloid my dad owns. <laughs> he gestured towards the group in the distance, looking slightly embarrassed. Are we gonna have to kill him? I don't want to kill him. I convinced them to come out here at night to look for uh, to look for you, actually. 
Aha! To look for me, but you're not here for revenge, are you? That was a horrible idea. <laughs> you're in a lot of danger. Get the hell out of here before something bad happens. I like option three. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I trust him. Uh, get the hell out of here before something bad happens. Huh? David blinked at me, looking startled by my sharp reply. Hey, listen, you don't have to worry about me. Why? The other night, I... I... Oh no, you turned him! No! Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. Charisse is gonna be mad. I woke up in the dark and it was so warm. I thought I was dead. I didn't know what happened to me. But then it all flooded back. You were so good to me. The way you took me somewhere safe and covered me up. His voice trembled with awe and adoration. Or maybe we didn't turn him? I don't, I don't know. Shit. I don't really understand what you are or what you did to me, but after that night, I can't stop thinking about you. How amazing it all was. A Strix? What's a Strix? There was a certain dazed dreaminess in his voice and eyes. He looked at me like I was his hero, a rock star or a movie star, someone larger than life. Are you saying you want me to do it again? <laughs> Uh, David, go home and forget any of this ever happened. You've got some serious issues, you know that? Huh. Uh... David, go home and forget any of this ever happened. That sounds like a good plan. No! Damn it. I- no, I don't want to forget it. You don't understand how much you mean to me. Maybe it was love at first sight, or maybe it's something more. I don't care. Sorry, I have banana bread in my mouth. None of that matters. All I know is that I need to be with you. I need you to take what you want from me again, or else... Are you threatening me? I don't know. I might go crazy. He was so full of passion, almost too innocent to be real, like a snowflake before it lands on the dirt. That's an interesting analogy. I could barely believe it, but he really did seem completely in love with me. Or if not with me, then with the sensations I'd given him. Uh, alright, I'll take you in. I can't, David. I'm sorry. It's too dangerous for you. You're an idiot. Leave before you get hurt. Um. <laughs> Everyone is learning the importance of hygiene because vampires may smell you. I think everybody can smell you when you stank. Let's see. Um... Let's see. Mm. I can't, David. I'm sorry. It's too dangerous for you. Please! I mean, please don't send me away. Panic flickered in his eyes. I can take care of myself, and I promise I'll make everything worth it. Please? Is he crying? How am I supposed to get rid of him? Uh, well, if you're completely sure, then alright. No, you should go home and pretend this never happened. Fuck! Ugh! See, now I'm annoyed. Like, I did not come here to adopt you. Hmm. 
Mm. You'll find out what a Strix is if you take him in. Well, fuck it. I saved. Let's give it a shot. If you're completely sure, then. All right. Yes! I am sure. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I could smell his excitement, see his pupils dilating, and hear the quickening of his heartbeat. It was almost painfully honest, the way his body was so expressive. He probably couldn't lie, even if he wanted to. Then please, tell me what I should call you. <laughs> Mistress! <laughs> Uh, just call me Nuchula, call me Mistress, call me Master. Should we be giving out our real name? I mean, it's not like you can do anything with it, but... Mm. I wish there was a, I guess, Master, Mistress, is there a gender neutral form? of that. I guess master could be gender neutral? Hmm. Just, just call me Nuchula. Nuchula, that's your name? I love it. Thanks. He gave an eager nod, then fell silent, staring at me expectantly. All right, tell your crew to leave and we'll head back together. Get rid of that beanie. <laughs> if you take him in, you can feed from him. Ooh, free food. Even vampires can appreciate free food. I mean, technically all their food's free, but like easy access. Hmm. Tell your crew to leave, and we'll head back together. Uh, room service! <laughs> oh, that's good. Tell your crew to leave, and we'll head back together. You got it. I'll let them know I won't be coming around for a while. Okay. You gonna run off and fuck with a vampire. That's what you're gonna do. I watched David as he turned to hurry over towards his hollering group, waving them down. When I strained my hearing, I could make out his eager, love-struck babbling on about me, which resulted in a lot of huh and a few mutterings of, dude, what are you on? But he apparently convinced them to leave because they started to head back the way they came, their camera lights finally blinking out. And so, our secret as vampires survives another day. Oh, okay, Corvid. We'll see you in a little bit. Alrighty. Hmm. Back to the hotel. With David safely in tow, I return to the hotel. I can't believe they let him in. Oh, okay. The clerk looked extremely uncomfortable when he noticed my new companion. He informed me that, due to health standards, <laughs> David would have to stay in an adjoining room. David didn't seem ready to leave my side just yet, though, so I let him follow me into the hotel meeting room. God, what is Sharice gonna say? Unlike the other night, Sharice was already sitting there. <clears throat> she was on the phone with someone though and she kept uh, she held up a finger to keep me quiet ooh Mr. X I like that yes 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 I'll arrange it no it won't be here at the Hollywood Heights mattress <laughs> stop it what no no human baggage thank you I'm sure he can look after himself for a few days Yes, no, I really don't. Very well, goodbye. She forcefully clamped down the receiver, letting out a disgruntled sigh. <sighs> the idiot can't even deal with his own coven. 
As if my hands aren't full enough right now, either. Everyone always needs something, without fail. Rising to her feet, Cherie strode over towards me, clearing her throat deliberately. Ahem, <clears throat> well, since you're back, Nuchula, I'll assume you took care of the problem. Hopefully no future mortals will... <laughs> her face, she's like, what the fuck did you bring in here? She trailed off. Her eyes focused sharply on David, practically drilling holes into his skull. <laughs> David's like, the fuck? Ooh, stream snacks, good stuff. He shrunk back behind me, as if hoping I'd serve as a barrier between him and Charisse's death stare. <laughs> Charisse, meet David. David, Charisse. I've taken in a human to feed from. I hope you don't mind. I kind of like that second option. Just like, hey, this David. He my friend. Charisse, meet David. David, Charisse. <laughs> Hello. How charming. <sighs> With a heavy, disgruntled sigh, Charisse shook her head, though she seemed more puzzled than annoyed. That's a rather bizarre coincidence. It would seem you found yourself a Strix. She paused, peering at David over her glasses for a few moments before clarifying further. Streesies, the plural. Strissies? Streesies. I don't know how to fucking say it. The plural are rare mortals with particularly appealing blood. Many of them can retain memories of being fed upon, unlike normal humans, and some of them may even remain conscious during it. But they also tend to have rather extreme reactions to being turned, so please, deal with him carefully. I will, no need to worry. Sucking him dry would just be counterproductive, wouldn't it? Oh, God. Sucking him dry would be counterproductive, wouldn't it? Charisse forced a flicker of a smile, <laughs> though it ended up as more of a sneer. Oh. Just so you're aware, I do not advocate taking live-in blood pets. Unless they are proclaimed dead or have no living relations or friends, they can often result in various issues sprouting up. But for the duration of your employment, I will permit it. <laughs> David won't cause any problems, right, David? God, I, I don't want to invite even the thought of that. No. Thanks. I appreciate it. Just make sure you handle the logistics. She flicked a hand as if to dismiss the subject, finally shifting her needle-like stare away from David, who let out a quiet sigh of relief. He obviously had no idea what was going on, and I could feel him clutching the back of my jacket, looking for some kind of moral support. As I was saying, I assume you took care of the problem on the beach. It may have seemed like a trivial task, but in the encroaching digital age, ha ha ha, hiding our presence from mortals is growing increasingly difficult. Someone is always watching. Sandwich! Uh, now, your job involves further diplomacy, and fortunately for you, no sewers. 
As always, uh, as always, she coasted onto my next duties in her perpetually impatient tone. However, it does revolve, involve returning to a place that may be all too familiar. The Abattoir, the same club where your sire visited you. Ah, yes. All right, what do I have to do? That's fine with me. It has a good aesthetic going on. Good, maybe I'll get a chance to find the guy who turned me. Do we want to find him? I don't know. How do we know when we find him? Hmm. <laughs> it's got a good aesthetic. I'm down. Oh, really? I have to wonder if being less absorbed in the aesthetic may have saved you from your current stare or state. Although such matters are moot now. Thanks, Charisse. Thank you for that. However, back to my point. The abattoir sees many rich and powerful clientele, both human and vampire, each looking to fulfill their own depraved desires. I'm sure you know how clubs are. With inhibitions lowered and desires heightened, information is always bound to flow freely. Because the abattoir is a neutral ground, just like Heath's bar, all manner of vampires are frequent visitors. Thus, it is very important we learn about anything they might let slip. Nod silently, doesn't that defeat the whole point of a neutral ground? Don't tell me you're sending me on a spy mission. Next page. I kind of like option two. Doesn't that defeat the whole point of a neutral ground? If all rules were perfectly obeyed in war, then there would inevitably be far more bloodshed and drawn out conflict. Besides, in this case, neutral simply means an argument, not to f an agreement, not to fight openly. Okay. All I need you to do is convince one of the club's managers, Alusha, to deliver regular reports to us. Alusha. I heard she was a, the partner, the blood pet, of a Mavar, so she's already aware of our political situation. Uh, why would- if she's a Mavar- then, yeah, what if she's already delivering reports to the Mavar? Like. Let's see. I feel like she already on the Mavar side. Like, you and Iskari, bitch. Uh, what if she's already delivering reports to the Mavar? Then remind her that the Iskari are better patrons, and we will remember who aided us and who stood against us when the war is over. However, keep in mind that Alusha is a very willful woman. She's highly capable for a mortal and very knowledgeable of our unique abilities. I doubt simple force would be effective, and the last thing we want is for her to end up working against us. So please, don't try and bat her around. With a deep inhale, Charisse drew herself up slightly, glancing toward the wall clock. It was a not-so-subtle hint that our meeting was about to end. I'd like you to deliver, to deliver your report within the next few days, Nuchula. Until then. Her eyes briefly grazed over David, who I could feel trembling behind me. Do stay out of unnecessary trouble. 
Leaving me with those pointed words, she made a swift exit. Th that's your boss, I guess? David finally managed to break his silence after Charisse left, shuffling out of my protective shadow. She's terrifying. <laughs> Is it hard to work with her? Eh, she's not that bad, just a little stiff. <laughs> you have no idea, David. No idea. Anything for the aesthetic. True. Alright. Uh, <laughs> just a little stiff. Undead joke. They're not that bad. Just a little stiff. Up. Oh! I didn't mean to- there we go. And Corvid's back. Not that bad, just a little stiff. Ah, uh, well, I'll take your word for it, Nuchula. He gazed at me rapturously. In his eyes, it seemed like I could do no wrong. So, what are you going to do now? David's question made me stop and consider for a moment. Even though my task that night was over, there was still plenty of time until sunrise. Marcus's earlier advice resurfaced in my mind. Maybe now was a good time to start scoping out the other vampires in L.A. Go explore, stay at the hotel. Let's go explore. Let's, uh, let's have David come along on an adventure. Let's go exploring. Before I could go out, I had to make sure David was safely deposited in the hotel. He was incredibly reluctant to leave my side, but once I promised I'd see him again before long, he finally agreed to stay in his room. I slipped out of the hotel into the cool night air. There were a few places I could visit tonight. Saturnalia, the beach house, Blood and Roses. What's Blood and Roses again? I forget. Oh, is that the, uh, that's Marcus's sexy shop, isn't it? We haven't been there yet. Let's check, check, check it out. Blood and Roses! It seemed like a good time to pay Marcus a visit. He did say I could stop by whenever I wanted to, after all. The only problem was, I didn't know the way to his shop. So I ended up asking my driver for directions, which was only slightly mortifying. Ew. Uh, the shop I stepped into was the unholy union of a goth teenager's bedroom and Dracula's sex dungeon. Perfect. Oh, we're gonna like Alusha? That's good. My eyes were attacked with an obscene amount of red velvet, gaudy lighting, and faux Victorian furniture. But that wasn't the most striking part. That honor belonged to the whips, chains, and shockingly large <clears throat> accessories on display. Should I rate this video 18 plus? Are there any children here? I hope not. As for the floors, they were cluttered with shelves chock full of books, VCR tapes, and magazines. I couldn't even begin to count how many. It was like a pervert's library of Alexandria. That's pretty good. Are we lagging? Are we okay? What's up, stream? What's happening?
It seems like we have hit a lag. Hang on. Let's see. Come on, stream. Let's refresh our pages here. Okay. Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> if they ever dropped a Yuri game, they would never go hungry again. That's true. Very, very true. Okay. Well, let's continue on. Let me know if there's an issue. Okay. And we're back. All right. Maybe. Boop. Yes. Okay. Sexuality to be the most interesting and easily exploitable of mankind's desires. Ah, we have a Marcus fan in the chat. And so I've set up my charming little shop, which serves the dual purpose of providing modest income while also constructing a psychological exhibit for me to study. It's also quite amusing to force the city leaders into visiting me here. Nobody can act truly high and mighty among a sea of fallacies. God damn it. Fallacy. My God, what a missed opportunity. Oh, Marcus. Uh... Do you know vampire physiology works? How old are you? Are you allied with any of the leaders? Do you know how vampire physiology works? Ah, uh, yes, the most lurid of questions that everybody's simply dying to know. Marcus let out a gentle sigh. We can replicate most of human biology without too much effort, but it is not a subconscious affair like breathing was as a mortal. Producing arousal usually requires concentration of men or mental attunement, the subject willing their blood to flow downwards. Okay. Blushing is also possible. In fact, but what kind of pathetically cutesy creature would choose to blush on purpose? It loses the entirety of its charm. So you'll almost never find a vampire so shamelessly pretentious. Though I suppose there are exceptions. Um, shit. How old are you? Well, as a man of the past, the present, and the future, that question is a mighty difficult one. Let's just do away with bothersome numbers and say, I am however old you believe me to be. <laughs> Why are you always so cryptic? You could just give me a straight answer. Alright, if you say so. I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone. Uh, he gave a short, satisfied nod. Are you allied with any of the leaders? I mean, yeah, we already knew the answer to that. Why, why did I do that? Have you already forgotten my advice, fellow traveler? 
A smart man doesn't hitch a ride. Wheels break down, but the will to keep walking? Never. But you work for Charisse, don't you? I thought it was hard to be completely neutral here. <laughs> so you double cross everyone? Pretty fucking much. I bet you that's what he does. I'm gonna save here. Just in case. So, you double cross everyone. Oh, now that was simply uncalled for. Double cross? I don't even cross the street without looking both ways first. Marcus clicked his tongue, corking a brow at me. The truth of the matter is I contribute to every side, and I assist none. Like all supposedly philanthropic causes, they hold no meaning to me. Once upon a time, I pretended to care, as most people do, but no longer. His gaze drifted idly away, as if the subject had somehow lost his interest. Hold on. Let's go back. I'm gonna try something else. Uh, I thought it was hard to be completely neutral here. Oh, it is indeed, but I am no mere bystander. Marcus clicked his tongue, quirking a brow at me. <sighs> Water. Okay, same kind of thing. Okay, what do your Golgotha visions look like? What are Golgotha visions? My visions, dearest Nutula, are of potential, of what may be there, of what exists in other realities but is not yet discovered in our own. After all, we merely skim the topmost layer of existence, though on occasion a mind can look past it. He stared off into space for a long pause, collecting his thoughts before continuing. In the grand scheme of time, we've only just discovered the subatomic and the distant skies. And only because these things allowed themselves to be discovered by our eyes. How many other things are invisible to all our senses, to the paltry workings of science? How many things exist beyond our clumsy, self-important ideas of the metaphysical, Ghosts and deities bored enough to obsess over our tiny selves. How many things are out there that we just cannot comprehend? In the centuries to come, we'll look back on ourselves like we have time and time again and smile at our quaint ideas. Smile at the idea of religion like we now smile at little children. Smile at gravity like we now smile like those who thought the world flat. Smile at simple morality like we now smile at apes. Marcus lit out a <laughs> faint chuckle, but it sounded more wistful than mocking. My visions allow me to see these alternative futures laid upon our own, and it's always quite distressing. Good and evil weren't always what they are now, nor will they be the same in a hundred years. Thus, it seems folly to me as a man for all ages to chain myself to the moral rock of the century. We look back on the atrocities of earlier days and say times were different then. But I desire to look from the future to the present, to see what we will one day consider primitive and backwards thinking. These outdated ideas we've carried past their lifetime. He is, um... He's given some advice. He's, he's pontificating here. Honestly, I have conversations like these with my friends, like when it's late at night and we're really loopy. Oof. It, it makes me wonder, you know, what of this generation will be thought as, like, you know, problematic. 
<laughs> He's a walking fortune cookie. Yes. Yes, he is. What are your own morals then? I see you've got some interesting ideas, Marcus. Like, I get you. Martha gets you. Does Nuchula? Maybe not. What are your own morals then? Quite simple. Do as one pleases and do unto others as they've done unto you. Treasure and protect those who bring you delight, but love and hate carefully, for those passions lose their meaning when tossed forth without care. Yes! Oh my god! Yeah, Marcus does give me that Loki vibe. I wonder if Dova thought about that when she was creating these characters. We have, like, Punk Jesus slash Thor, and, like, I don't know, Marcus could be, like, Lucifer slash Loki. Mmm, interesting. But there is one thing I will never, ever abide. The abuse of innocence. Children and the childlike, and pets who are children in their own ways. There is a difference between the strong ruling the weak, and the strong abusing those who cannot defend themselves. That is not strength, for there's nothing noble about exercising power on the defenseless. Such abusers are simply weak themselves, perpetuating a cycle they too endured. But I believe they should be discarded to build a stronger society. I agree, Marcus. He ended with a note of bitterness in his voice, staring at the carpet. About something else. Um. I don't know. Well, let's say I'm going to end my time with Marcus here. That's good. Thank you, Marcus. I think that's all for now. Very well. We'll see each other again soon, I'm sure. Bye, Marcus. Leaving Marcus's shop, I return to the dark streets. Visit Saturnalia, visit the beach house, go spend time at the hotel, head back to my room. I have a feeling we're going to be doing this a few times during gameplay. Hold on. Look at my stats. Eh. We're still about the same. Okay. Hello. Let me go back, please. Whenever I visit the stats page, I always have trouble getting back. Seriously, is this some kind of bug? A glitch in the game? Come on now. Aha, there we go. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do? We haven't talked to Heath much, but I also kind of want to chill with David, but I guess he's just a feeding thing. Let's visit Saturnalia. Deciding to pay Saturnalia a visit, I hopped in a taxi to drive downtown. Let's see. 
A warm, nostalgic atmosphere welcomed me back inside the bar. I glanced around at the knight's uh, patrons and noticed two interesting groups standing in different spots. Yes, I do believe um, my Mavar has been upped. And that's fine with me. Um, <laughs> Luca, let's go to the beach. Beach? Beach? Sorry, I chose the bar. Um, I glanced around at the night's patrons and noticed two interesting groups standing in different spots. A cluster of younger-looking vampires by the bar, giggling and relentlessly shifting in their seats. Restlessly, not relentlessly, shifting in their seats. And some reserved, well-dressed Iskari murmuring in a quiet corner, looking like they didn't want to be disturbed. Heath was there, too, lingering quietly behind the bar as he wiped out a glass. Approach the young- We're gonna- We're gonna go talk to Heath! That's the whole reason we came to this damn place. Back to page one. Let's go talk to Heath. I stepped up to the bar, waiting to catch Heath's attention. He stayed lost in thought for a short while longer, his, eye, his glazed eyes staring off at nowhere in particular. But soon enough, our gazes finally met. Almost instantly, Heath broke into a smile, putting down the glass and stepping toward me. Nushala. Right? The moon looks great. It's good stuff. You came by alone this time. That makes things a little more comfortable, I think. Hello, Heath. How have you been doing? Hi, just thought I'd stop in. Mm-hmm, I wanted to talk about some things. Oh, goody, we can talk with David. Uh, I wanted to talk about some things. Oh, really? Well, you know I'm always here to listen. I'm sure you're still adapting to our world, trying to understand all its confusing people and parts. No matter how strong you are, it's hard not to feel overwhelmed sometimes. So if there's anything you want to ask me, Nuchula, please do. I had some questions about you. Let's talk about someone else. Hmm. Let's let's see if Heath knows the tea. Talk about somebody else. <laughs> you and Randall, I want to know what the fuck happened. That thank you game, you knew exactly where I was going. You and Randall. Hmm, he hates me. The only reason he ever comes into the bar is to spend time with other Mavar. And when he doesn't ignore me, he's giving me disgusted looks. We used to deal with each other a little better, but over time, we grew further and further apart. The stronger Randall got, the more he seemed to hate me. I don't know if it's because of the war or because we came to understand each other's natures more. We're just total opposites. Do you know anything about his past? I think you could find a common ground if you really tried. I'm not trying to get them to make up. I'm trying to get the tea. Sorry. Do you know anything about his past? Only that he grew up somewhere near Bakersfield and he worked in Hollywood before he was turned. It's Hemsworth! No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's what he says, at least. But no one here knew him until he became a vampire. I don't think he likes to talk about it very much. What's your relationship with Marcus? What do you think of Sharice about something else? Let's talk about something else. Let's ask about Heath. Ah, the cross. I'd forgotten about that. How do you normally feed? Is there a meaning behind your necklace? Have you ever turned another vampire? 
What are your house powers like? Um, is there a meaning behind your necklace? Oh, he shifted. Yes. I used to be religious. I think I still am. Oh? It helps remind me that I'm not alone. I don't know. Like... Do you believe that God created vampires? His fingers drifted up to the cross, slightly tracing along the metal with a reverent touch. This necklace was a Christmas gift from my mother. I've always treasured it. But it doesn't have any meaning beyond that. I'm sorry if the story isn't as exciting as you hoped. Heath let out a faint sigh, his hand shifting back to his scarf. Tea is a priority. Um... Let's see. What are your house powers like? Well, I have a little skill in glamour. The Ascari ability to take on someone else's appearance. But I've never been able to use hypnosis. Maybe it's because I'm still young, or I just don't have the talent for it. Heath let out a small, self-deprecating chuckle. Like you, I didn't have a mentor when I was turned. Everything I've learned, I had to teach myself, mostly. Glamour came to me quickly, but every time I use it, I get this strange feeling afterwards, so I don't practice it often. That's all there is. I don't think of my other powers very much. I'd prefer never to use them. He rubbed a finger along his cheek, gently shaking his head. Have you ever turned another vampire? How do you normally feed? About something else. Have you ever turned another vampire? Heath quickly shook his head, uh, looking a little distressed at the very thought. No, never. I don't ever want to, either. Having to take somebody's life, then pulling them into our world forever. I just couldn't. A small shudder ran through him. What helps you find comfort as a vampire? That's interesting. Other people. Being around other people, I think. Both humans and vampires. Seeing humans still living their happy lives here, that makes me feel warm. And seeing the people in our society, our version of normal, living out theirs. I just don't like being alone for too long. It makes me start to wonder what I really am, what we really are. But being around others makes me feel less different, calmer, I think. That's probably why I still run this bar. Okay, let's go back. That's it. Thanks, Heath. So soon? No, but really, thank you for coming to talk with me. Stay safe, Nutula. Reaching to pull out a cigarette, Heath slowly turned away. Goodbye. Approach the younger group. Leave. Should we make vampire friends? Let's try. Let's try and make some vampire friends. Um, here. Approach the younger group. Let's see what the fuck happens. Drunkenness prohibited. Oh, it's funny. Curious, I started wandering towards the younger group of vampires nearby. As I got closer, I realized they were whispering and pointing at a man further down the bar. He was huddled off by himself, shifting uncomfortably as he nursed his drink. Hey, are you Nuchula? Oh, ho, how... Huh? Mm, who are you? One of the vampires suddenly reached out to tap my arm, offering me a hopeful grin. Who's asking? Could you introduce us, please? She nodded towards the man who was slowly shrinking further away. Who, who are you? 
Yeah, could you please? We're from San Fran, but we've heard so much about him. And we know your friends. Who is it? We did our research. Who are you? Two other vampires chimed in eagerly. I'd rather not, actually. He looks uncomfortable. If he's uncomfortable, leave him alone. <laughs> Corvin, beach, beach, beach. Okay. All right. Let me just finish this and we'll go to the beach. Uh, I'd rather not, actually. Oh. Well, fine. I guess we'll just go over alone. A disappointed wave of sighs and grumbles ran through the group. Come on, guys. Today is going to be the day we meet him. Nuchula or no Nuchula? Who is it? With that, they shuffled away from me and towards the man. Before long, he was surrounded by a new entourage, and I lost sight of him in their chattering bodies. Is it Randall? But I'd already chosen not to get involved, so I kept my distance. I'm confused. Who is this? Hi, what are you doing here? Uh, I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> Why are you acting like you don't know? I think they're just testing us or something. Come on, let's go over. The vampire who tapped my arm now started to pull me impatiently towards the man. Who is it? He's cute! Who's that? When we stepped up beside him, the man reluctantly turned to face me. Please, I think there has been a... Oh my god, oh my god, he's talking to us! Marcus is talking to us, I think I'm gonna faint! Bitch, that ain't Marcus! The moment he opened his mouth, two of the vampires let out excited squeals. Yes, I am a Marcus, but it's spelled with a C, not a... Can I have your autograph, please? How do you know Nutula? Did you sire them? Actually, we don't even... Is Nutula the only one who can melt your icy exterior? <sighs> Why do you keep pretending you're not Marcus? We know who you are. Before I knew it, we were surrounded by the chattering group. They seemed completely convinced that this man, Marcus with a C, was actually Marcus with a K. <sighs> Marcus threw me a plaintive look, all but wailing, please help me, with his eyes. Listen, everyone, I know Marcus, and this man isn't Marcus. Uh, Marcus is just being shy. He'll open up if you keep asking him things. This is Marcus, not Marcus. I went back. Um, let's see. Listen, everyone. I know Marcus, and this man isn't Marcus. Oh man, we know what you guys are up to. Marcus always pulls tricks on people. I did go back. I wanted to see who this man was. Yeah, but you're not fooling us. Nice try. Hey, don't let him slip away! Their attention shifting away from me, the Marcus fan club swarmed Marcus like flies, clearly convinced he was the real deal. They pestered him with a constant stream of questions, asking about everything from his political views to whether he thought the Beatles' White Album was better than Abbey Road. The quiet, fumbling replies he gave were very un-Marcus-like, but none of the vampires seemed to notice or care. Some of them shoved things into his hands to autograph, where he reluctantly uh, etched an M, followed by an ambiguous squiggle. Judging from Marcus's reaction, tonight wasn't the first time this kind of thing had happened. And from the defeated look on his face, I figured it probably wouldn't be the last. Eventually, the group started trickling off, wandering back down the bar. 
they were apparently satisfied with catching a glimpse of Marcus in the wild, and I heard snippets of their delighted gushing as they walked away. <sighs> like a wilted plant, Marcus drooped back against the bar, visibly exhausted. You know, Los Angeles is a really charming place. I like it here. The atmosphere is fantastic. But, as my luck would have it, I share a name and house with the most infamous vampire in the city. <sighs> he let out a resigned sigh, rubbing two fingers against his temple. It would be so nice to have a peaceful time at bars, enjoying my night like any other average Joe. Is that such an impossible dream? Maybe I should try going by Mark instead. After mumbling wistfully to himself for a few moments, Marcus glanced back to me, clearing his throat. Oh well, thanks for trying to clear things up anyway. I'll let my friends know you're not just out to make people's lives more difficult. Huh. Hold on, we're gonna go back. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Let's see what's happening. Yes. Uh, meh. I guess not. I don't know. That just seemed like the best option. guessing this happens pretty frequently. Have you ever met the real Marcus? Let's see. Um. Let's see. Have you ever met the real Marcus? No. Never once in my life. Which makes it worse somehow. He grumbled under his breath, but in the passive way of someone who wasn't up to fighting fate. From what I know, the real Marcus likes to pull pranks a lot. So every time I say I'm not Marcus, they think I'm just playing around. It's usually not that bad, just a little inconvenient. But then other times... <sighs> With a quiet, flustered cough, Marcus stared very intently into his glass. You know, the kind of shop Marcus runs, right? Well, sometimes his fans decide to give me gifts that match the store's aesthetic. I can deal with signing the occasional t-shirt, but when someone shoves a cat tail attached to a plug into my hands at a drugstore, things have gone a little too far. Maybe you should try and clear things up with the real Marcus. At this point, I think you should just embrace it. Uh, poor guy. Let's see. Uh, maybe you should just try and clear things up with the real Marcus. I've tried, but I can't get in contact with him. And you know, a part of me can't shake the suspicion that he's actually helping spread the fake identity. I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, as Marcus shared his lamentations with me, I spotted two Mavar coming from the bathroom hall nearby. The next moment they froze, staring at us intently. Hey, is that... Holy crap, is that Marcus? Their eager gasps ran through the air. Oh no, not again! Oh god. Lord have mercy. Like he'd just been shot from a cannon, Marcus turned and bolted for the exit, leaving his half-finished glass of blood behind. One of the Mavar ran after him, giggling delightedly. Poor Marcus! And just like that, I was left alone in the bar once more. 
we leave. Okay. I left the bar's quiet ambiance, returning to the street. Let's go to the beach, each. Everybody wants me to go to the beach. We're gonna go to the beach. So we have to go quickly. I had my driver take me back to the beach, deciding to stop by Randall's place. Let's see. Kitty! Retracing my steps from the other night, I found it again easily. Though the long, uh, though the strong scent of the Mavara was enough of a trail on its own. The door was already unlocked, so I let myself in. Inside, a diverse blend of vampires filled the open space, laughing and chatting over drinks. I didn't see Randall anywhere, but I did spot Jack lurking off by himself. Talk to Jack. Mingle with the other Mavar. Is Jack the one we bribed? I think he is. Let's talk to him. What's up, my boy? Talk to Jack. I wandered over to Jack, whose stocky figure stood silently near the doorway. His head was lowered, and I watched him idly fiddle with his jacket zipper for a solid minute before he finally noticed me. Ah, uh, smart boy. Uh oh. Hey, Nuchula. Is he gonna be eyeless the whole time? He blinked a little, shrinking back a step out of reflex. I, uh. I wanted to say sorry again for the garage. It's really not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Why'd you act so differently back there? It's not a big deal. It's okay, Jack. We boys now. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Whew. Glad you're not pissed off or anything. I'm new as hell, so I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing, so... Just thought the best thing to do was, you know, throw my weight around and act tough. He sank back a little more into his hoodie shadow, clearing his throat. <clears> throat. Hell, I'm probably the newest vampire in the coven besides you. Been under a year, I think. The guy who turned me was, uh, my dealer, actually. Not one of Randall's clan, just a loner. Yeah, he had a real strong hatred for humanity, that guy. Sold drugs to try and get people to fuck themselves up. Not for the money. I only brought pot from him. I guess me not falling for his crack deals pissed him off. Cause one night when he was real mad about something I said, he grabbed me and turned me right there. You're speaking about him in the past tense. What did you say that made him so angry? Ah, beach episode! We are at that point in the anime. What did you say that made him so angry? Uh, I think I told him I didn't want to be a fucking junkie. I wasn't gonna buy a smack or anything, because I'd seen how fucked up some of his other buyers were. <laughs> Guess he thought he'd show me, but he's the one six feet under now. He got too ballsy one night and wandered pretty far into Iskari territory. And even though he wasn't with Randall, most people just figured he was. So a couple of patrolling Ascari caught up with him, thought he was a spy, and they took his heart out. At least, that's what I heard, anyway. Do you ever wish he was still around? It sounds like he had it coming, to be honest. I wonder what he was doing in Ascari territory. Sharice was like, nah, we don't want him. Jack is a cinnamon roll. What a good boy. I mean... You know, he not the brightest bulb in the box, but, like, he's a good boy. I wonder what he was doing up in Iskari territory. Yeah, I don't know. Probably trying to find more people to sell shit to. Jack shook his head, letting out a long, glum sigh. Anyway, uh, I should get going. I'm heading out to get some info on an Iskari base. So, uh, watch your ass out there. And don't do anything Randall wouldn't do. New catchphrase. <laughs> Just made that one up. 
yeah. Okay, bye. His uh, jaw clenching in a blend of embarrassment and anxiety, Jack hurried outside, throwing a brief glance back at me. Mingle with the other Mavar, leave. Let's see what else what else we have to do. Let's uh, let's see what's up. I began drifting between the clusters of Mavar, looking for a conversation to step into. Nobody seemed to know what to make of me, and most of the looks I got were confused, curious, or downright suspicious. Randall introduced me. Uh, for my first impression on them, I decided to act. Warm and friendly, neutral and curious, cool and collected. Let's see. This game has three eyeless characters. I wonder why. Hmm. Um, let's be... Uh, let's be warm and friendly. We a friendly bitch. I wanted to put my best foot forward, so I made sure to act amicable and easygoing. If anything, the Mavar seemed surprised that I wasn't antagonizing them, as if my affiliation with Sharice implied that I wanted to burn the house down. As the night went on, their wariness around me didn't exactly fade away, but some of them started opening up, including me little by little in their discussions. By the time I'd spoken with most of the vampires who seemed to be willing to chat, I felt like I knew the clan a little better. They were about as diverse a group as any I'd ever seen, and beyond their shared house, there was one thing that united them. Their respect for Randall. All of the Mavar obviously admired him, and I heard stories about how he'd helped so-and-so's brother or inspired somebody to ditch their evil boss and become a free spirit. Some of their tales seemed too heroic and exaggerated to be true, but the Mavar obviously believed them. And it seemed like that belief gave them all confidence. Okay. Cool. We love punk Jesus. Uh, slipping out of the beach house, I made my way back across the sand. When I glanced toward the sky, I realized sunrise was on its way. So I decided to head back to my hotel room. It had been an interesting evening, though it was hard to believe my sixth night as a vampire was already ending. Yet here I was, steadily adapting to the new world around me, changing in ways I couldn't yet understand. I returned to my room, feeling at least somewhat satisfied. But as I flicked off the lights, settling into the cozy darkness of sleep, somewhere in my mind, an uneasiness began to shift. Oh. Eh? The cool ocean breeze ran through my hair, drifting across my face. I was on my way to Randall's beach house to meet him and his clan. Oh, is this? I thought she was dreaming. Never mind. Hang on! I can't start a new chapter right now, y'all. It's late. <laughs>